All right, what we're gonna do now is uh, stain up a set of antlers using the oil paint methods. And this is my favorite method, let me tell you why. Uh, what we can do is I have an array of colors here that are by Windsor & Newton oil paints, and it allows me to copy or re reproduce an exact color of a set of antlers if I'm trying to replicate it. It's, it's a very uh, forgiving method. You can, you can put the color on, take it off. You've got a lot of variables that you can do. Uh, it's, it's my favorite method. Let's do it. Now what we're going to be using, this is lacquer thinner. What I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour some in a cup. You know, I've got a lot of different colors here. Of the Windsor Newton colors, I've got raw umbers, I've got burnt umbers, I've got raw siennas, I've got burnt siennas, we've got Payne's gray. You know, I'm not going to use all these colors for this particular set, but these are the colors that I do use, uh, you know, often. So what I like to do is I like to squirt out a couple of color, colors on a, either a coffee can lid, something that I can mix them on. So today I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. It doesn't take very much of the paint once you start mixing it. I'm going to use a little bit of Burnt Umber. And a little bit of Unbleached Titanium, which is a white, an off-white color. Now with these three colors, I can create different shades that I want to achieve on these antlers. What we want to do is we want to put thin washes of color on these antlers. Obviously you don't want to come in and just hit the paint itself and, and swab it on there. You know, to get, to get the depth and to get to the color, we've got to put thin washes on. So I always start with the lighter colors first. So I'm going to turn this rack into uh, first kind of a bonish gray color, and then we're going to apply the different browns and hues that we want to put on this. So to do this, I dip my brush into the lacquer thinner. I touch just a very small portion of the Payne's Gray. And I'll apply the color. You can see it goes gray right away. And this is going to tone down that's very light. Yeah, very light. Now the nice thing about using the uh, lacquer thinner is if you make a mistake and you get a color on there you don't like, you can come back with the potassium, I mean, excuse me, come back with the, the lacquer thinner on a brush and take it right off. So until you put that final sealer on, you're not stuck with any color that you have on here. and that thinner evaporates fast too, so that color lays right in there. It does, it does. You know, anytime you're staining these antlers, uh, the, the plastic is not porous, so what you're really trying to do is to get your pigment or get your color to stick to the surface. The trick is to keep dipping the brush into lacquer thinner, dragging the paint to the middle of your lid here, and just thin washes. You don't want to put it on too heavy. If you put it on too heavy, obviously you're not going to get an even, an even look. Uh, and it will not flow. Okay, so what you want to do is do this on both sides, front and back, and then continue to the other side, putting the same color on. Okay, we've already covered the whole antler set with uh, Payne's Gray, and now I'm going to come back with a little bit of raw umber, give another wash coat, and we'll see how that looks. Now what happens by putting these different wash coats on, you get a little depth in color, and you can see the uh, natural uh, reproduction of the bone color all the way through. So we're going to do the same thing here except I'm using raw umber. Lacquer thinner goes on and dries very quickly. Well, that's the nice thing about using the, the lacquer thinner. You can see your results right away. You're not, you're not waiting for a, anything to change color. What you, what you see is what you really get. Unlike the potassium that goes on purple and you're waiting to see the color that, it, that uh, it dries to. You do have to keep going back to your brush because every time you dip this brush, 
and apply the, the pigment, it starts evaporating right away. So you got to work relatively quickly to get the color on. And again, we're not worrying about drips at this time. We're just trying to get some pigment on the antlers. It gives a little brown cast. Exactly. We're trying to get a little brownish, brownish gray cast on these antlers. Yeah, the gray's coming through the, the brown color you're exactly. applying on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Typical set of antlers like this in your own shop, how long would it take you to stain them? Oh, well, probably 45 minutes. Complete? Complete. 45 minutes stop to finish. Absolutely, but you got to realize I've done this a long, long time and done a lot of antlers. But for the average guy, you ought to be able to, have, you ought to, be able to stand a set up in a couple, a couple hours. Yeah. But again, the nice thing about the, but the, uh, the lacquer thinner method is that if you do screw up and you do get a color on there that you're not really happy with, you come back with your with the, a rag and a little bit of lacquer thinner, wipe it off, and you can start uh, start over. Yeah, starting starting to take effect now. Yep. Yeah, as the Lacquer starts to dry, it leaves the pigment of the two boils. And it starts to look like a like a set of antlers. Now, like I said before, if I'm in my shop and I've got the original sitting on a bench next to me, I can keep looking over and seeing if I want to add any color to match up the, the antlers that I'm trying to achieve. Trying to, to match up. Okay, so I've colored up this one side with a second coat of the raw umber. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll come back and see what we have. Great. Okay, so what we've done here is we've put our, our second wash coat of raw umber. And you can see I do have some drip marks and there's some dark areas and, and, and whatnot on here, but we're not done yet, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'll wipe any uh, imperfections off of the towel, uh, this terry cloth towel, and then we're gonna come back and darken the bases a little bit. But what you can see, is we have a really good color on these antlers now. The, the, we've got the grays, we've got the browns, we have a little bit of light, light color from the, uh, the reproductions themselves. Uh, so we need to still fine tune these a little bit. So what I like to do is come back with a terry cloth towel, such as this one here, and I'm just gonna kind of rub it a little bit, and you can see some of the color comes off. Okay, but that's okay. I'm just blending any drips, any imperfections uh, that were caused by the wiping the, the stain on. So the thinner is evaporated, but the oil paint is not totally dry yet. That's exactly correct, Mark. The oil paint's not totally dry yet, but the thinner has, has evaporate, and that wa that's what allows us to be able to wipe the drips off because the oil, oil paint isn't dried yet. Again, the nice thing about using the oil paints is it does give you a variety of colors that you can achieve by blending and mixing, and you can really produce some accurate antler, uh, antler steam. Yeah, once you go over it with the towel there, it really uh, brings out the veins and the, and the yeah, highlights of everything. it really does. The, uh, you can see the antlers starting to take shape and they, they start looking more like the bone gray and the, the bone color that, that you'd expect from a, from a white tail. But I do like having mo mo most antlers, most white tails will have a little bit of darker bases then they show throughout the rest of the uh, set of antlers. So we're going to do that. And, and to do that, all I'm doing, I'm using the same color scheme. I'm using the raw umber. And all I'm doing is adding more pigment of the paint. In other words, it's not quite as thin of a wash as we use throughout the antlers. So I'll come back and apply this in kind of a stippling method. And as I do that, you can see the bases are getting darker. And I'll carry this up to about a third of the main beam, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, just travel up here. I notice you're getting a little bit thinner. Right. Backing off on your pigment. Right, backing off. And I can also adjust that with a, with a cloth towel when I wipe it off. So you can see this side here, one's a little bit lighter, one's a little bit darker. Now I'm going to turn the rack over and do the back side just by adding a little more pigment of the paint. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to seal this up, but we're going to use the same method that we used with the potassium permanganate. Okay, now the, the oil paint does stick to the surface of the antlers a lot better than the, the powdered form of, of uh, or liquid form of the potassium that we used. Mm -hmm. 
but I still like to seal it up. I still don't want to be able to pick this up and, and have it scratch off or anything. So what we're going to use again is our, our super fish sealer. The main thing is when you're putting on this spray, obviously you want to make sure you get good coverage and then you don't want to come back and handle the antlers until it's absolutely dry so you don't put fingerprints or any other imperfections that your hands would leave on there. And that's the whitetail deer using the two boil paints mixed with lacquer thinner. That's okay, the final bonus method we're gonna, I'm going to show you is a combination of a couple of uh, methods that we already, we've already done. One is with the potassium permanganate and the lacquer thinner. Instead of starting off the potassium permanganate straight on the antlers, what we're going to do is we're going to give this set of antlers a bone gray color first and then come back with a potassium permanganate to put the brown tones in. Now, it, you know, you might ask me why would I do something like that? Well, for, for someone who hasn't had a lot of experience painting on colors, this is really a no-brainer type of method because you're not trying to blend any colors. All you're doing is applying two colors, the gray color and the potassium. So you still get the, the, the combination of a couple of different colors on the antlers without the, you know, without trying to blend and make colors to, to, for them to come out perfectly. It just gives you a different look. I think you'll enjoy it. I've done it a lot of times. So let's do it. Okay, we've already cleaned this set up with the lacquer thinner. We've flashed the seams. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix unbleached titanium with a little bit of black to give us a gray color. We're going to apply this straight to the antlers. And again, this is going to be a thin wash. Now, it might look black when it goes on, but when it, when it dries and I wipe off the excess, it will be gray. Again, we're not concerned with the drips, the runs at all. We're just trying to get the, the gray color on. So when you throw the potassium on there, it kind of bleeds everything together. It does. It kind of it does bleeds everything together. Except the difference is you're putting a you're putting a brown tone over a gray tone instead of a, a brown tone over just a white a solid white color. So it does give you a little different look. And uh, depending on the type of antlers that you're trying to copy, it uh, can produce very convincing results. Okay, I've done one side. I'm going to go and do the other side exactly the same way. Okay, so what we've done here, we've put the, the, um, the gray color on, the, on these uh, nice white tail antlers. And now we're going to mix up the potassium. This is the hybrid part of the method I spoke about. We're going to put the potassium on, and that's going to put a brown tone on our, our gray base. Now once again, we've turned these antlers purple. Now they probably, compared to the first rack we did, it probably looks a lot darker. And that's, of course, because we've got the gray base underneath. Now this method allows the taxidermists or wildlife artists to achieve a set of reproductions that has a couple different colors on there. With, again, without having to, to pre-mix and worry about different tints or shades. All we've done is put a gray base on. Uh, you know, it's your, your, your choice whether you want a light gray base or a dark gray base. And then just the brown color that the potassium generates after it uh, begins to dry. And then once this potassium dries, then what we're going to do is we'll have to come back, just like we did on the other one before, and take our steel wool and make our highlights, and then again we'll seal it up with the uh, flat matte finish. Okay, I've covered one side up. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. We're going to let it set, and we'll come back and finish them up. Okay, so what we've done here, we've gone ahead and put our potassium permanganate on both sides, and we're going to, what we're going to do is let this dry up. I'm going to come back like I did in the other methods, take steel wool and buff the tips, spray it with our, our flat finish, and we'll have a nice set of white tail antlers. Yeah, this stuff really is turning that, you can see that gray coming through that as it's starting to dry. Right, it gives you a good two-tone oh, yeah. uh, set of antlers that look really, really good.